All right, Kevin, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, nice to hear from you. Congrats on your 76. That seems like it's um, getting towards what we're looking for there. So I, I like to hear that, man. Um, all right, so let's talk chipping quickly here. Uh, it sounds like you are talking more perhaps chipping than pitching. Uh, my technical definition, you know, if it flies further than it rolls, that's a pitch. If it runs further than um, it flies, then that's a chip, right, from my perspective. So sounds like you're talking about something more green side, perhaps off of a fairway lie, those thin type of lies. Um, is from my understanding what maybe we're talking about here today. So I've got a 54 in my hand. This is just kind of what I had lying around, um, but uh, hopefully that'll be all right for us to get some sense of what we're working with here. So from what I heard from you saying, my general approach is I'm trying to use the bounce. I'm trying to limit my wrist hinge and I have my hands. You said um, kind of even with the ball is how I think you described it. So um, I like some of that and some of it I like a little bit less. So um, let me talk a little bit about a couple of the different setups that I use around the greens, particularly um, off of a fairway lie. So for me, um, if I'm looking for a, let's say a runner type of shot, right? Let's say that I uh, got a decent distance between here and the flag. I can let it lay on the green, roll out a decent distance. Here's the little bit of setup that I'll use. And it's probably not too dissimilar from what you've heard your whole life, right? All right, you're gonna stand. I, I like feet fairly close together. I definitely don't like a, a very open stance. I don't know if you utilize that or not. I tend to set up fairly square for most of these shots. Um, I think that aiming open causes a lot more problems than it helps solve. Um, so if you're doing that, I think that's one area we could look at pretty quickly affects people's kind of swing direction um, and can cause some pretty big problems. So um, definitely need to see some video probably at some point or, or get together as I mentioned. So um, yeah, so anyway, I would start there. Nice kind of square stance, so nice and in line with where we're headed. I like to see a fairly um, uh, close together heels. I don't want my feet very spread apart until we get to kind of the flop shot mentality, right? Heels close together for a little bit of a runner type shot. We're gonna have the ball a little bit back of center, but not a ton. I don't like it like behind my foot or anything like that. Um, just slightly back of center. Hands are gonna get maybe slightly out of the ball, but really just slightly. Hands perhaps even with about where the ball is, not where the club head is. Um, and then the, here's the key for me on these shots. I like to get the handle nice and vertical. And what I mean by that is I wanna be in close a little bit on these shots, right? So that the handle's right about here. You're making a very short arc back and through. Puffers, you might need to move again, buddy. But um, so the, the swing is gonna be relatively short back and through. But what is a little bit complicated is that the arc of this shot should be fairly wide, actually. We don't wanna feel like that club's gonna get vertical fast or there's a lot of hand action. I wanna feel like those hands are gonna stretch out a little bit behind you and a little bit on the way through. Um, the arc is, I don't know if it's something you've thought a whole lot about, but it's a pretty powerful um, tool with the wedges um, to control a little bit of the, not to get down in the weeds, but spin loft, just basically like what type of shot you're creating. Um, is it gonna be a low runner or is it gonna be a high soft one? Is it gonna be a mid um, kind of trajectory ball that's gonna have the maximum amount of spin um, that I think is probably the best one for most people that really get their arms around, but um, that has a lot to do with how you kind of manage the arc, okay? Sorry, we're getting down the weeds, man, but um, this is kind of niggling stuff. This is stuff with lots of details um, associated with it and a couple different types of shots. So again, we're talking here first about that like little runner chip shot, right? Okay, so I got a 54, ball's a little back to center. Shaft is again, a little bit vertical um, this way. I'm gonna make a um, relatively short swing with a little bit of pace to it, um, but I am not going to allow that club to sort of unhinge or go this way a whole lot. Um, uh, this is one where I'm more kind of holding on with my hands. It's probably closer to a putting stroke than it is a long pitch shot or something like that. Uh, okay, and so that's the approach you're looking for. And yes, we are still trying to use the bounce of the club, right? And I tend to consider this back heel of it here, especially towards the heel as to where we're, we're trying to make contact with the ground here. So we're trying to have that shaft a little vertical um, and have that bounce hit on the bottom there and extend out this way. Okay, so that's the low runner one. Um, I generally speaking agree that there shouldn't be a whole ton of wrist hinge there. I, I would say in general though, that um, what concerns me a little bit about that for you is that I know from working with you in your full swing that you can tend to stall out your body and use your hands to kind of continue the swing through. So if you're working really hard at not letting your wrist hinge and you're not necessarily using your body to pivot a whole ton, I bet you can do a lot of this kind of, maybe get a little chicken wingy, um, you know, and I can see that if you're trying not to thin it, um, you can kind of try and stay on top of it 
not release your hinge and end up kind of digging that leading edge into the ground. I, I suspect that's where some of those are coming from. So I might encourage you actually to have a, a little bit of a softer left arm perhaps. Um, I know that sounds um, a little strange here, but if we can perhaps feel like our left shoulder, our torso, our lead side here is gonna be part of the engine that's pulling this club around, even on these little chip shots where let's say we've got the ball back a little, we're not gonna use a ton of wrist hinge, our shoulder, our lead side is pulling the shot around to where at the end of this swing, the butt end of that club is even sitting closer to our lead hip. So, um, and again, that's, so the difference here, let me just give you the summary is that the, the runner, the low runner that's gonna, you know, chase out to the hole is gonna have the longer arc. Our arms are gonna extend further away from our body. That's how I'm defining arc here is the distance from the butt of the club to my, um, my side. Okay, so short arc this way, that ball's gonna run out and stay nice and low. Let's say that we move to more of a mid trajectory shot. And this is the one that I consider my stock one. It's probably gonna get off the ground. Let's say we're trying to hit it 20 yards. It's gonna come off the ground, something like this, right? Um, and for that shot, we're gonna have the ball, for me, just dead stock middle, right at my belly button, basically. Feet still fairly close together. Hands are gonna be, again, nice and even with the ball there. Shaft still a little bit vertical, but a little bit closer to how the club manufacturer intended. So it's gonna be um, maybe very slightly just heel off the ground to kind of not have that club dig into the ground quite so much and face very slightly open. Um, and again, we are really trying to use the bounce of the club here as you um, said that you're trying to do as well. But for this shot, I definitely do feel a little bit of softness and a little bit of hinge in my hands here. I tend to think of your wrists as some of the margin for error that we have in these shots. Um, they can be great tools for shortening the arc of this swing here. Um, and we want this arc to be a little bit shortened. That's one of the tools that will help you um, create some spin generation here and make sure that we're brushing the club on the ground rather than digging it. Holding your wrists and not allowing them to release is a, is a recipe for digging that club into the ground. Allowing this lead wrist, let me just pull this back so you can kind of see it, to have a little bit of flex and flow this way can be one of the tools that we use this way to help that club release here and create a little shorter arc um, and create a little bit of spin. So um, yeah, again, we're gonna have the ball nice and middle. I tend to have the face a little bit open. Um, club sitting on the ground a little bit a little bit lower, uh, closer to where kind of the manufacturer intended. And again, I'm gonna feel not only are my wrists and hands doing a little bit of action here, but there's a little bit of turn here to my torso as well as a little bit of release this way. So one of the drills that I like um, for feeling this allowing yourself to um, create a little bit more um, wrist hinge and release here on this shot, um, is to hit some shots with mostly your left hand, but your right palm on the club, okay? So um, we're not gonna use the fingers of our right hand at all to kind of hold on to it. We are um, gonna let the club get that way, and you're gonna feel that as you start to swing back and through, you're gonna need to kind of allow this club to unhinge as it goes back and through this way. Now the other key is that we make sure that this club is getting close to our left hip, that we are in fact turning that through with our torso and everything at the end of the shot. So um, yeah, that's that's your mid trajectory type of shot. Um, and I know that you um, kind of mentioned that really it's the, the ground contact, right? How this club is interacting with the turf that is the biggest issue for you. Um, so we'll need to isolate that as you go through this. But I think that getting a handle on which of these setups you're trying to create and what shot is that you're trying to create and maybe allowing a little bit of this um, hinging and unhinging right here can be a really great tool for helping not um, dig that leading edge into the ground. So, um, and then there's the flop shot, which we didn't necessarily didn't mention that. So you're looking for, but I, I do something similar to what I was doing before. The only changes are the handle is actually going to get a little bit lower. My stance is going to get a little bit wider, um, not necessarily by doing much else other than um, widening my, my trail foot, my back foot. That club's gonna get a little bit lower. Face is obviously maybe gonna get a little bit open. And this is gonna have the shortest arc of all, meaning that the club is going to hinge up relatively quickly. I'm typically gonna use a little bit of my lead wrist here to help keep that face open here in the back of my swing. So you can see that from this angle. Get it this way, that face is nice and open. And I'm gonna hold it through impact that way, but also release it up this way. So this is gonna have the most amount of where the club is going to overtake my body in terms of release here. And that's how you're gonna help create all of this loft that's being delivered to the club underneath that way. And the club is gonna end up sort of fairly close to my body here. So um, you didn't mention anything about a sort of flop shot. I'm sure you have some sense of how to hit the ball high, but man, when I um, 
just sort of figured out the relationship between these three type of shots um, and what were the key elements that I wanted to keep consistent through all those things. Though for me, it's kind of using this, this belly and torso is definitely a big driver of this action, right? It's definitely not just my hands and wrists, but my hands and wrists are sort of like the steering wheel a little bit. They're what, um, this is the engine room for me, right? This is what's gonna drive the power and the, the length of that swing. Um, but the steering wheel, my hands and wrists here are definitely gonna be the things that are gonna control that, the cushion on that arc. You know, am I, am I gonna be a little shorter with this arc and pop that ball up? Or am I gonna keep that, that arc a little bit wider and get that ball to run out a little bit more in that way. Uh, and that can really help just how do you interact with the turf. I think you're right to identify the balance is how we want to bump that on the ground, right? We want to get to the roots of the grass here with the backside of that club. Um, but if you're digging that leading edge in, I suspect it's probably either that your hands are perhaps starting too far forward or your angle of descent is a little bit too low or just simply by working too hard at not releasing your wrist this way, you're really setting yourself up to dig that lean wrist in. So I would experiment here with this like one-handed shot to kind of feel that release with the palm only on it, not our fingers. Can I like unhinge this club as we get through it that way? Um, and then just try and play a little bit with the different trajectories that we're looking for here. The, the lower one where you can still maintain a nice wide arc, hands are getting farther away from me, hands are far away from me here, a little less release for sure, but still being driven by here to here turning through. Um, and then again, adjusting to that mid length one where, or the mid trajectory one where Face is a little bit open, club's a little bit more neutral, but we're gonna get some of this unhinging happening as we're turning our torso through. And then the, the flock shot's an option as well. So hopefully that makes some sense, man. I know that was really detailed. I try to um, address, yeah, stuff without having a chance to see you hit some wedges, but let me know what questions you have. Okay, Kevin, good, good chatting with you, man. Take care.